Hello, welcome everyone back to another episode of Energy Unleashed podcast. My name is Suzanne Worthley and I'm with my partner, Kim Hess. Hello, Who's everybody. Hi, Suzanne. You can always tell when you're at the cabin because you got the, the cabin. I've got a fish. <laughs> also, a Minnesota cabin look behind you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Or isn't a fish? I mean, yeah, <laughs> awesome. That's awesome, though. I'm glad you're up there enjoying some nature and some beautiful time. It's so. been too long. We really really, really are happy to be up here for a little bit. So I know I'm on my way. I'm on my way soon. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to do this one today. I've not told Kim anything about this, <laughs> this particular client session. And it was oftentimes when we do these podcasts, I tell client sessions so that we can all learn from one another. And um, sometimes I just have really crazy things happen. And this, this one's more of like, I think good humor and a yuck because it was so incredibly bizarre. <laughs> and I just thought that we would share this one with you and get Kim's um, actual, <laughs> her knee jerk reaction to it. Cause I haven't told oh, her anything. So. I did are. call her and say, Oh my goodness, we have to do one quick before I come up to the cabin. Cause this was so fun. So anyway, I was working with a new client. He was a very nice young man, probably, I don't know, in his mm, late 30s, maybe. I, I don't even know. Anyway, he had come to me through a referral. He had never done energy work before. And he had come in with pretty, you know, pretty wide eyes, like open to mostly anything. Doesn't do a ton of spiritual work uh, right now, but he's very connected. He was super connected to like the 2D realm, lots of plant and animal connection, and yet he is, I think I can say this, he's a chiropractor and he um, doesn't get outside a whole lot because he works a lot. And I mean, a lot. And so he had um, kind of brought forward that he had gone through a recent breakup with a partner and he and this partner, it was pretty fresh. It was pretty, um, the anger was still there a lot. He had a lot of gaslighting happen during that relationship and a lot of manipulation. And he really thought that this was going to be a serious relationship with this person. And yet he was very still a, he's the one that broke it off. And yet he was the one that was really angry. It got broke off. And this happens a lot because we will, we will kind of like um, react to the situation more in a 3D way and be really pissed off. And I guess my point of bringing this forward is a couple of things. I really want to point out to people when we have a breakup, there is really energetic reasons for breaking up. I mean, there's energetic reasons. And I wish that we would maybe open our minds and our hearts a little bit more to breakups are not failures. And it isn't that I'm bad or not enough. And this is what the rhetoric was going on in his head at this point, even though he was the one that broke it off. And he was the one that was getting really gaslit and really kind of manipulated and, and downtrodden. He still was feeling very angry about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, you know, if we could just look at relationships like energy pockets, I meet this person, we work with the energy. And when that energy is done, oftentimes the universe will make the relationship end in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think we're the ones that's ending it. Sometimes we think we got left. So even though he was the one that left, he was still pissed. And so he was really ruminating about a lot of the little piddly details, a lot of the little nitpicky things, which is what we do, especially when it's gaslighting, right? I mean, that's hard. And so he was like mad about this little thing and mad about that little thing. And I kept saying, yeah, but let's look at the big picture. You know, let's look at the, this mm -hmm. divinely. This is a good thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, 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 that. So this is a typical thing. So anyway, it was really funny. We started, <laughs> we had never done energy work before we get to the point of him going on the table. And all of a sudden we're round, we're not there yet. We're still talking and I'm talking about how it works and how he's going to lay on the table and this and that. And all of a sudden we hear, and I'm like, did you, did you hear that? And he's like, what was that? And I got, I don't know. And then all of a sudden I hear, <laughs> and then I, and then we looked at each other and I'm like, what the heck, what the heck is that? And then all of a sudden it was like, ee, 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 ee. and I'm like, shit, what is that? And we were laughing so hard because now I'm thinking, oh my God, is there something in my room? What is hey. going on? And for those of you that may never have come to see me for an actual appointment, my healing room is in my basement, a part, a new part of my basement. And there is a well window, e egress window. And in that well, it's always had about this much, um, you know, crap, leaves, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my God, is that a damn mouse or what is that? And all of a sudden I look over and sure as shit, this little thing is going 
<laughs> and this egress window has never really, really shut tight. It has about this much, you know, in there oh. because I don't want it. Well, in the winter, I'll shut it tighter. I will do whatever. But at this point in time, I open and shut it a lot yeah. and it doesn't always shut perfectly tight. Now it has a screen, so I okay. nothing's coming in my room, but still this little tiny thing is slipping in between and it's trying really hard to move in between and it kept getting stuck and then the other one would come and try to help it get unstuck and I'm like holy shit we were laughing so hard and I'm like I don't know if I can concentrate when I've got these two damn mice right and we're and then all of a sudden it would be quiet and then we're like no 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 we're good and then we start to talk again and then ee -E -E, and then the little shit would go all the way up the screen and then fall and I'm like holy shit I'm like going to lose my mind. I don't know if I, you know, and we're laughing and we're not. And I'm thinking this is so unprofessional. And yet, what do I get to do about this? It's outside. It's nature. I mean, it was really super funny. So all of a sudden I'm like, okay, this is actually kind of funny. I go, you do realize things happen in healings that are supposed to mean things. Right. And he's like, okay. And I said, and I walked over and I looked really close and I go, first of all, that's not even a mouse. I said, that's actually a vole, oh, which is different than a mouse, yeah. but in totem, animal totem, they basically carry the same meanings, you know? Okay. And I started laughing and I said, I'm going to look up what a vole actually means because this is really freaking weird. I said, this is like animal totem shit and you're getting a message here. And he's like, what? <laughs> and I said... <laughs> This is for you because you don't go outside very often. And this is a message. I have to put these on because my notes are so funny. So I said, so funny that there was a vole in the windowsill. And the vole in the mole, are you ready? Is okay. about deconstruction and rebirth. Tearing down old things that are no longer working, hence his relationship and his negative thought patterns, and to move forward in your life. And I am dying laughing. And when I pulled this up, he's like, are you kidding me? And I go, no, you can't make this shit up, right? <laughs> That is so awesome, actually. Well, it was, I mean, but it wasn't because this damn thing. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, oh, my God, if this gets in my house, I'm going to die. Right. Yeah, I mean, not that yeah. I couldn't do something, but still. Right. And so he's like, Suzanne, it's OK. It's OK. I can block it out. He goes, just turn up the music. And I'm like, OK. So he lays down on the bed. Now, again, this is little Mr. 2D man who nature loves. And yet he's never outside because he's Mr. Chiropractor. Right. And he lays down on the table. And now we've got EEEE -E 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 in unison chorus of, of bowl. Okay. And he lays down, I literally put his blanket on and I hear this gigantic screech and I'm like, what the F? And I turn around and now there's this giant Cardinal sitting on the top of the wheel, what? the wheel thing going rah, rah, at these two voles. And I started laughing so hard and I'm like, what is that? I go, who are you? <laughs> the <laughs> animal like, kingdom is here. What's going yeah. on? <laughs> And I go, who are you? Are you like Snow, <laughs> Snow White and male version? I mean, you're like, oh, and they're all coming. What is um, happening? And he goes, I don't know. And now he's looking out and we're looking out. He's sitting on the bed, looking out, going, holy shit, that is hysterical. So now the bulls are gone and the cardinals <laughs> like this. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Cardinal takes off and I just get him settled down again. And boom, a squirrel jumps in there. I <laughs> Good. I told you this. the squirrel jumps in there and starts going bonkers and chasing and chasing and I'm just like at this point I'm like I got, I got nothing and he's like I'm good I can hardly even hear it so anyway I'm gonna pursue on get myself all settled the squirrel jumps out still got the ees here and there the second I tapped in nothing for the whole entire 40 minutes when I worked on the guy or 30 minutes when I worked on the guy, it was absolutely quiet as a mouse, no pun intended here. And it was like so funny, not one noise, not one interruption, not one anything. It was so quiet. And then the second I drew him back into his body and I was grounding him, yes. <laughs> we laughed so hard. So now we're dying and we're giggling so hard. And I said, I got to look up the rest of the totems because yeah. this just has never happened to me ever in all of my 20 years of doing this stuff. I've never had an invasion of the animal kingdom. And I go, okay, Snow White, we're going to look this up. This is why it's so goddamn funny. So listen, Cardinal wants you to listen to your intuition. And I kept saying this to this guy. I'm like, you intuitively knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, I did. And I said, it's important that you honor your intuition. And that's exactly what the Cardinal meeting was for a totem. And I, we, he's like, okay, 
you need to be true to yourself is what the cardinal is about. And I thought that that was hysterical. There's also the cardinal version of those loved ones that come, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But the one that resonated for him was being true to yourself to listen to your intuition. And then the squirrel is about renewal. Again, he's starting all over. This has been done for a good three, four months or so. And needing to be adaptable to change. And I, because oh. he wasn't wanting to change. He didn't want to go forward. It was so funny. Oh my God. And then ultimately all of the messages were try time to try something different for the squirrel. And I literally was dying laughing so hard. And this guy is like, is this like how these things go? I'm like, no. The <laughs> regular healing experience? No. <laughs> he was so astounded. He And he just kept looking at this whole thing. Like he had this these eyes, you know, when it was done. And he felt a ton during the healing. And he could feel, he really experienced everything. He really gave it his all. It was amazing. But the astoundingness of not one peep for the whole 30 minutes when I was working, because the energy gets so big in here and everything just is, you know, protected and gone and then boom, you're back. And then yeah. they were all, and then it was all back again. And it was the most crazy, crazy thing. So a couple of things that I wanted to bring this forward for, <laughs> other than how freaking bizarre it was. I just can't get Snow White out of my head. And then I'm like, if the mutual of Omaha music started, <laughs> that would be, just be crazy. I, I was just, I wasn't even wanting to think of what else was going to jump in there because I mean, that sucker is what a good four feet deep, probably. Oh, right? it's deep. Yeah. And it's hard to get something out of there. And I mean, a squirrel can navigate, but those little teens, the voles are really little. And so it was, it was really actually very funny. So what I was telling him is a, you know, animal totems can be incredibly profound in terms of their messaging. Obviously, this one hit the nail on the head three times in a row. Mm -hmm. Three in and of itself is really, really important also because the Trinity works in three. And if you don't get it once, you don't get it twice, you better get it by three, right? I mean, this is this is also a really stabilizing number for him to be looking at in terms of moving forward and, and getting his life changed and accepting the big picture. And oh, that was the other part. There was um on the vol thing, it was about looking at the big picture, not the little piddly things. Oh yeah. It was looking at the big picture of everything and really, really being guided from the big picture. That was on something about the mice or the vol too. And don't obsess about the little tiny things because that isn't what is important. Mm -hmm. And so um the whole messaging all the way around was so profoundly on task that it was like really really well just bizarre right yeah. but really important for him to understand when you are connected to that plant and animal kingdom which he is and you don't honor it they'll get your attention and so i said to him you maybe want to start going through your life a little bit more connected to that kingdom because the kingdom will talk to you when it's needed mm -hmm. we will get messages from nature whether you're connected to 2d or not it doesn't matter 2d meaning that the plant and animal kingdom kind of like everything you know, the glue between the earth and the human. Um, but we all get these messages. Like if a bird is squawking, don't just think, shut up, ask it what it's squawking about. What do I need to know? You know, if you're really driving along and a bird dive bombs your window shield, you might want to slow down because it might be giving you a warning that there's something up ahead. You know, those kinds of things are gifted to us from the universe. And I thought that that was so important for him to understand because he was rushing through life without even like stopping and smelling the so-called roses. And I could not have made it more clear that when you're a Snow White or a male version of Snow White, it's even 10 times more important because that's where you work. This yeah. is your, this is, these are your people, right? And so it was really, really profound for him. And I think, I mean, uh, he he was still shaking his head and laughing all the way out the door. <laughs> he goes, I am so got friends I got to tell this to that are probably going to end up seeing you. And I said, well, don't let them think this is a normal situation because this no. is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you he, believe that whole thing though? Well, it's so interesting that like he was in such a place with the negative of all of the ending the relationship yes the thought path. <clears throat> right that it took something so bizarre like that and so like you can't make that up it, it just yeah. doesn't happen that way usually like you get yeah. one message and then you'll get another message a few days later and you might get something else you know not, not like bam 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 like yes <laughs> listen up bud listen up this is yeah. really happening i mean it's 
it was so over the top. It was so over the top. I do have to say, I was a little freaked out myself in terms of like, I'm trying really hard to zero in and be, you know, like connected yeah. to this dude. And then part of me is like this. If I, like, if I hear one little movement in my room, I'm like, oh shit, did they get in? You know, it's, <laughs> it's really. Sad. Yeah. But for him to walk away from that situation i i'm so curious it would be a really good one to follow up with like did yeah. he start like getting out into nature and you know um hugging a tree did he, right. like, did he as a chiropractor i mean you're so in tune with people's bodies right and you give i'm sure that he's um probably given a lot of his energy away to other people because yeah, he's, a, he's a total empath yeah yeah, yeah. He is. he's a total and he's learning and through this um he also learned about his field and his empathing and cutting cords etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah for sure so I mean there was a lot this was a crash course and <laughs> like a lot of things for Too him right? much and then but then to think about you know how do you have a really good relationship with somebody if you're not balanced and not yep. in your elements because you're you're not yourself yet. You're not really yourself and all of that. Like I And as I wrote in the Confident Empath book, most of the time when we're with a narcissist, oh. it's an empath situation because the narcissist is the empath to the nth degree because there's no other way to get the fuel because it's such a screwed up, you know, ego. So it's really important also if you're in a narcissistic relationship in any way, shape, or form, or an abusive relationship. Yeah. I can almost guarantee it's always because there's empathing going on in a codependent way, right? Both. Right. And we've done um, a podcast before on gaslighting, but what kind of situations yeah. was the gaslighting like just- Just really cheating on, oh, cheating on them besides, by the oh. way, cheating on them besides. So um, yeah, there was a lot of cheating, a lot of lying. Uh, and the intuitive part was so funny because he he, he would say, I knew that there was- infidelity going on but I just didn't really want to know that so I ignored it in and in my heart of hearts I knew and this is again why we get hit on the head about intuition and the cardinal and the squirrel again saying no follow your truth inside of you follow the lead inside of you because we don't want to hear that we don't want that to happen right no. and then lots of manipulation on you know you're you're not good enough or you're not this you know gaslighters just tear you down about about everything so it, it was very very that's such a it's so it's interesting because I'm sure emotionally he was really torn down like you said not worthy you know and, yes. and he was gaslighting the situation that yeah. is horrible um but then to walk away with this spiritual experience of animals like practically knocking you on the head going hey <laughs> you wake to, up you need to listen okay. wake up right Okay, I just was pulling up the number three because I did not do that. So let's just look at this really quick too, okay. because ultimately when I got done with him and I and I went outside and cleaned out the dang windowsill, yeah, because I had another client did on you, the heels of that. Did you find the voles? Yes. And guess how many there were? How many? Three. <gasps> three? So, again, three. Okay. So throughout human history, the number three has always had unique significance. Okay, meaning behind numbers deeply so the, the number of harmony, wisdom, and understanding. Okay. Um, numerology also associated with creativity, communication, and intuition again. Okay. Oh. So it's connected to the body, mind, and the spirit, the cycle of birth, life, and death. It's exactly, they're all saying the same exact thing. That's why it was so funny. Every single totem was about a death and a rebirth and an intuitive understanding and trusting your wisdom inside. It was absolutely, but ironically, it was exactly what I was saying to him because that's what we do in these healing sessions is we talk about take your power back take your intuition back, take everything inside versus outside, blah, blah, blah. So everything I had been articulating for the last hour ahead of time then comes in bird and animal form. You know, I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. So yeah, that it was so fantastic. Oh my God. It was so much fun. <laughs> it was so much fun. So I think that he is definitely going to be looking at the animal kingdom a little bit differently, you know, mm -hmm. and you should have seen me trying to get there was no way in hell I was going in that, that well. <laughs> right? no. no. So I'm like no. doing everything with two, two, almost like chopsticks. I'm using two <laughs> rakes and I'm like, you know, doing this and doing this. And I, I finally did get them all out and stuck them in the woods, but yeah, it was super funny. I, I wished them well and sent them on the merry way down the block because. Oh, that's a, good. That's you know, good. You know, I, 
I couldn't kill anything because that's well, not after they were there spiritually for a guy. I forgot. Yeah. (laughs) And ironically, nothing's been back. Knock on wood. Nothing's been back since I checked that thing the last two, three days in a row, making sure because, you know, voles are kind of weird. And so it's like, ew. But um, yeah, three and three and then three different sightings of three different kinds of animals. It's a lot of three. That is just so amazing. I love that story. (laughs) um because i think the spirit animal it's so funny when you kind of motor through when you're in your 3d 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 3 and all of a sudden you're like what is that and what does it mean and looking it up it's like a weird you know it's meant to be something when you have that experience like i learned it at the cabin once kim when i was um laying on the dock and i heard the um the loon i think it was the loon when loon really loud like i mean like surprised me because i was meditating and it sort of surprised me so i opened my eyes and right when i opened my eyes we have giant eagles that yeah. we have what three eagles at our cabin usually oh, there were a lot sure. yeah so the one eagle lives right down the way from our cabins and right when the loon did it i opened my eyes and i'm laying flat now on the dock on my back and the eagle which is my animal told him swooped down right over my body and it was within a foot to two feet of my body which is you had to feel the unusual. like the the uh what is it inertia or the feathers yeah, like the, the whoosh yeah like it was it was awesome and terrifying all at the same time because I could not for the life of me figure out why it was swooping down on me other than hi I'm your animal totem but mm-hmm. the point is is I never would have seen it or even knew it happened other than I'm wondering what, what that was, you know, what that feeling was if my eyes were closed without yeah. the loon saying loon. So yeah. the you know, loon makes me open my eyes. So this has happened to me before while walking too, like a really bad caw, caw, caw kind of a thing. And I look up and there's an owl in the tree or there's an eagle in the tree. So mm-hmm. these are communications that come between the different animals for us to look up and pay attention or look over or down or wherever to pay attention to what is happening around us because they work in tandem. Right. And we are so ignorant because we go through life like this and we don't consider totems as a communications tool. Mm-hmm. And when we take these off and start to interact, it can be really profound and it can be teaching. I mean, he's literally got a lesson. So I thought it was just super funny. Well, and the animals pull you back into nature for sure. Yeah. So then you start to get messages like when you put your you know, lean up against a tree, you know, when you, you, there's just walking on the ground, you'll have an intuitive experience, you know, potentially along the way. And you do start to recognize it, which is just so, it's just so magical. I don't know. And what I told him is for the relationship, um, it is critical for us to understand when I have a relationship, whether I get out of it or they get out of it, it doesn't even matter. The relationship means that the energy is no longer symbiotic. It it does not resonate, right? So we're not resonating at the same frequency. It's important to look at it that way. There Mm -hmm. isn't a, I'm not good enough, I'm bad, he or she did this. It's about resonance of energy, no longer couples, right? Mm -hmm. So remember, if this has been downtrodden because I've been gaslit and my self-worth is down here, I do not want to necessarily run into another relationship because all I'm going to do is pull in that same resonance and frequency, right? Right. So because he's a 2D connector, I said, what would really heal your entire frequency and vibration that you hold within your you know, soul essence is to start having friendships and relationships with the animals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, is, this is what I said before they all came, um, you know, have relationships with the animals so that you can find a unconditional kind of a relationship and friendship you don't have conditions on it when a bird is talking to you you don't have conditions on it when you're hugging a tree and to find the trust within your own body to know that you're the one that is elevating or de-elevating your frequency per what you're connecting with is all coming from you it isn't filling from somebody else Mm -hmm. and so this is all the stuff that i was telling him right before they all came in the barrage Um, because it's very important for us to not jump in again, because we will just simply bat signal that same exact frequency. And I'll have the same exact. This is why people say, I can't figure out why I still have the same kind of relationships over and over again. I'm like, you can't figure that out, huh? You know, I mean, it's like, geez. So it's really important for us to consider unconditional relationship practice Mm -hmm. and the best way to do that is with the plant animal kingdom so and through that experience he's become so much more balanced you know through everything and his energy 
you know, his power will be in a, a better place. So his it intuition was, will be more obvious for sure. Yeah, it was so funny. Oh my God. That's such a great story. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I just thought you'd get a kick out of that one. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I know. I do have the pleasure of having really strange things happen once in a while. So that was a fun <laughs> one. I hope you enjoyed it. This is like I said, there's still lots and lots and lots of lessons in here. So take what resonates, toss what doesn't. As always, on behalf of Kim and I, thanks for watching. Hit the share, like button, and maybe comment below and subscribe if you choose. Yeah. Thanks. Until okay. next time. Bye. Bye.